Now, the heart of the matter is increasing wages to get out of poverty. But it is also the case that the conditions of low-wage jobs influence both the income into the house and the outcomes for families. And I'm just going to highlight a few using the life course trajectory uh, from uh, uh, zygote to adolescence, maybe taking Z to A instead of A to Z, and just going to highlight a few of these uh, points of intervention. Let's take pregnancy at the very, very beginning. Employers particularly low-wage employers, sometimes discriminate against pregnant workers in ways that can cause, yes, fetal stress. Now, there is a law that says you're not supposed to discriminate against pregnant workers, but what it turns out to be the case is that some employers, in fact, are not providing the kinds of accommodations that a pregnant woman needs to avoid this fetal stress. And in some situations, what they are not accommodating is something that they will accommodate to a worker who, for example, has gotten injured. And there's a story of a pregnant truck driver, for example, who just simply didn't want to lift for a temporary period of time as much weight as she had been assigned. Exactly the kind of accommodation that had been made for a worker who was injured, not made for her, a pregnant worker. There's a solution. There's a federal bill that's pending, the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act. There's activity at the state level. Let's take birth. Moms need time to recover. Children, whether adopted or not, need time to bond with parents. But few employers provide paid family leave. That results in only 5% of low-wage workers actually having paid family leave. And what's really astonishing is that nearly a quarter of women who took leave, whether paid or unpaid, took 10 or fewer days of leave. We're, APA, I'm sure you could say uh, and tell us more about the significance of having such a short amount of leave. Yet family leave increases the likelihood of a woman returning to her job. The first year of life. You know what? Babies get sick. They need wellness visits as well. And children sometimes have chronic illnesses and serious illnesses, particularly in that very important first year of life. Yet, the vast majority of low-wage workers, 70%, let lack access to paid sick days. Some low-wage workers, some low-wage workers have no paid leave whatsoever. Tell your neighbors this. No paid personal days, no sick time, no family leave, and no vacation. 